In the previous lecture, we solved three problems based on the energy of continuous time signals. All the three problems were special and we obtained three conclusions after solving them. The first conclusion was energy of infinite converging signal is going to be finite. The energy is going to be finite for infinite converging signals and thus we can say that the signals which are infinite converging are energy signals having the power equal to zero. The second conclusion was time reversal is having no effect on the total energy. So if you are having a signal xt and the energy of the signal is let's say e and you perform the time reversal then also the energy is going to be same. And the third conclusion was energy of two or more signals will be added if you add the signals. For example, if signal x1t is having energy E1, signal x2t is having the energy E2 and there is signal x3t which is sum of x1t and x2t then the energy of signal x3t which is E3 is simply equal to E1 plus E2. So these are the three conclusions we have obtained from the previous lecture. Now in this lecture which is part 2 of solved problems based on energy of continuous time signals we will solve two questions and we will solve these two questions conventionally because we can use the properties of energy and power signals in case of multiple choice questions but when you have to solve the question in your university exam then you have to follow the conventional approach. The conventional approach is nothing but using the formula and calculating the energy from minus infinity to infinity. So let's start with signal x4t you can see the waveform from minus infinity to 0 signal is 0 from 0 to 2 signal is minus 4 from 2 to 4 it is equal to 4 and from 4 to 6 it is again equal to minus 4. We already know the formula for the total energy it is integration minus infinity to infinity mod xt square dt but as you can see signal is x4t you can write mod x4t square here now from minus infinity to 0 signal is 0 and from 0 to 2 signal is minus 4 mod of minus 4 is 4 and the square of 4 is 16 so we have 16 dt plus from 2 to 4 signal is 4 mod of 4 is 4 and square is 16 again 16 dt then from 4 to 6 signal is minus 4 so again we have 16 dt plus from 6 to infinity signal is again equal to 0 so 0 dt now the integration is pretty simple and we can easily solve it. From the first integration we will get 0. From the second integration we will get 16. Inside the bracket t the lower limit is 0, the upper limit is 2 plus from this integration we will get 16 inside the bracket t 2 4 plus from this we will get 16 the lower limit is 4 this time, the upper limit is 16 and from the last integration we will get 0. Now let's solve it. We will have 16 multiplied by 2. 2 minus 0 will be 2 plus 16 multiplied by 2 again. 4 minus 2 is 2 plus 16 multiplied by 2 again. 6 minus 4 is 2. So in this way we will have 32 plus 32 plus 32 and this implies the total energy is equal to 96 the unit will be joules and this is our answer and as you can see the energy in this case is finite 96 is a finite value this implies the signal x40 is an energy signal and as energy is finite this implies the power which is the average power is equal to zero. So this is all for the first problem and this is how you can solve the question conventionally when it appears in your university exam. Now in the second problem we will use the same approach but this time signal is different 
and you can see from minus infinity to zero signal is zero from zero to two it is linear with some slope and from two to infinity it is again equal to zero so let's use the formula for the total energy minus infinity to infinity mod x5 t square dt integration minus infinity to zero signal is zero from zero to two signal is x5 t so i will write mod x5 t whole square dt plus from two to infinity two to infinity signal is again equal to zero this integration will be zero this integration will be zero so we are left with this integration and to solve it our first task is to find out what will be the signal x5 t you can see this straight line and we will try to find out the equation of the straight line the standard equation of the straight line is y equal to mx plus c where c is the intercept and as you can see the straight line is passing through the origin the intercept is going to be zero y will be x5 t x5 t x will be time t and as we have already obtained intercept is equal to zero i will write it down in the equation plus zero now the only thing left is to find out this m this m is the slope now there are different ways to find out the slope i will let you know two different ways using which you can easily calculate the slope the first thing you can do is to find out delta y this is delta y and it is equal to four after which you can find delta x and it is equal to two the slope which is m is equal to delta y over delta x so 4 by 2 will give you slope as 2 so we will have 2 here and this is the equation of line x5 t equal to twice of t the second way is not actually different from the first way here we have written delta y so instead of writing delta y i can write y2 minus y1 and delta x i can write as x2 minus x1 so actually this way is not different from this one these two things are same and if you see this line and focus on these two points you will find the coordinates of this point is 2 and 4 the x coordinate is equal to 2 and the y coordinate is equal to 4 and for this line both x and y coordinates are 0 as this is origin so you can consider this as the second point and this as the first point p1 p2 this implies 4 is y2 and 0 is y1 so we have 4 minus 0 2 is x2 0 is x1 so 2 minus 0 and this will also give us 2 as the value of slope so in this way you can easily find out the equation of line and now we will solve the integration the total energy e is equal to integration 0 to 2 mod 2t square dt this is what we have obtained from y equal to mx plus c x5 t is equal to 2t when you square twice of t you will have integration 0 to 2 4 t square dt perform the integration and this will give you 4 inside the bracket t cube here we will have 3 and the lower limit is 0 the upper limit is 2 so when you put the limits you will have 4 by 3 multiplied inside the bracket 2 raised to power 3 will be 8 0 raised to power 3 will be 0 so in this way you will have 32 by 3 joules as the answer so now you understand clearly how to approach the question using the conventional way and I think this lecture is clear to you. In the coming presentations, we will solve few more questions based on energy of continuous time signals and we will focus more on properties. This lecture was completely dedicated to solve the questions using the conventional way. And if you have any doubt regarding this lecture, you may ask in the comment section.